hey welcome back guys and in this video let's start looking at firing certain queries to our playground and see how we are able to get the data so as i said query is one way to fetch information from our graphql's underlying you know, data right and the basic syntax to write any query is you start with the keyword query and then you have this bracket and now let's look at some ways of fetching certain kinds of data for example i have products so why don't we try and do that as you can see you'll get a lot of hints over here and i'm selecting products now immediately it gives you a red indication and let me see if i can get that error message it says field products of type product list must have a selection of subfields. So this means we need to first of all define certain fields. What are fields? I have added that curly braces, hit control enter. And now I will get a list of fields which are present inside this query. So I can see there are total items. Let's select that. And now you can see the red error goes away. Why don't I? hit the play icon i can see there are 55 items this is interesting let me hover over this play icon can you see there is a shortcut that says Control enter so going forward i'm going to use that instead of again and again clicking this icon now i know there are total 55 items i hit enter hit Control space and i can see there is something called as items as well now either you can click here i mean select this and go inside and explore what are the different things or you can go inside schemas not not schema actually go to docs products and then you have item right so can you see everything is listed over here which means i should have something called as name a slug a description a featured asset so let's try that so i have name let, let us first get the id the created at we will get the name the slug what else let's just keep this let's keep simple i'll hit Control enter and i can see all the 55 products over here with their id name slug so on and so forth so what have we done so far we have created we have fired a query in graphql which is to this particular thing we are fetching products right and we are describing the exact shape of our result can you see we have total items so the result says total items then we have items which is an array but then inside the array the object of individual item is following the exact shape which we have defined in our query and that is the reason if you remember i said in, when you're working with GraphQL, it is the client who is going to take the decision what data they want and not the other way around. The backend is not at all aware of what kind of data needs to be sent unless and until the front end is saying, hey, backend, this is what I want right some people may say okay you know their query can be as simple as i don't want the total items i just want to show every product so can you see immediately that thing changes someone may, may say okay you know what i want also the featured assets featured asset again is a type a custom it's not a field on its own it has multiple things in it so let us see what all things can we get again something which we should refer to the docs if we want to it will give you better understanding so we have featured asset which is of type asset and can you see there is assets as well so we have something called as featured asset which you can easily say that this is like the featured thumbnail if you want to show the list of products maybe this is the one which you should pick this is one of the best shots of that product but then there can be multiple products so we are getting a an array of assets but then in both the cases can you see the type is asset which means the fields are going to be similar so why don't we get the width oops the height and maybe the preview 
and let's see what is the source okay i'll collapse this and hit enter source is this preview is this so this is preview 71 okay something like this and source is asset source so i think this is the raw image if i'm not wrong and the feature the preview is i think this is maybe you know compressed let's see actually so this is my first image it's a big one yes unsplash preview and let's look at this one how big is this okay pretty similar i don't see too much of a difference maybe there is something you know more to it i'm not very much aware but from the graphql what we can understand is that there is preview and there is source so we can pick anything which we want and we should be able to show the image so in this way we are able to you know get more detailed into the type of data which we want and as we saw there is assets so inside assets again i can pretty much copy this and if i run now i can see that okay maybe laptop has only one asset this one has one as well i think generally every thing has one asset so maybe if we upload two it will start showing up but as you can understand this is allowing you to create a lot of different permutations and combinations to fetch the information that you want specifically for your screen or your front-end implementation and i think this is one of the biggest advantages of having graphql you control what you see or what you get right this is how we are able to solve the problem of underfetching and overfetching as well so to quickly summarize we saw how we can fire a basic query to our graphql interface we are returning or we are getting a collection of products right it has fields these are fields the product has items because it had this field as well total items right let's quickly run that so total items is 55 and then we are iterating over each item item has id created at name slug and then there is a field called featured asset where it has width height and preview similarly assets is also a field inside the product where it gives us an array of assets and we can see most of the products are generally with array length one so that's about it quick few tips if you would have seen um let me know this is not the one if you go inside docs can you see inside some of the items there is an exclamation sign some of them don't okay for example slug is fine featured asset it it doesn't have that exclamation sign whereas assets do have an exclamation sign what does that mean it basically means that these properties over here which has an exclamation sign is mandatory which means you can have your ui coded in a way where it expects an array of assets you may have to write an if condition to check whether featured asset is present or not and do some kind of front end rendering behind it okay but when it comes to asset you can run a map function specifically if i'm talking about javascript right which is the most common thing to do um but yes if if you are building an application in react for example right and if you get the array of assets you can easily run the map function and render stuff in this because you know that there is going to be at least one asset present in that product but you don't know whether the featured asset is present or not similarly i think in the asset if you see id created ad updated ad name everything is pretty much you know required but the focal point and the custom fields are something which are not mandatory which means it is possible that sometimes you will not get it so the exclamation is about the mandatory or the required part of things then the other stuff i guess you would have basically understood these are something called a scalar um it is you know numbers strings these are you know stuff which are represented over here and then you can have custom 
types as well for example assets is a custom type it represents an array of asset right so this is how you are able to define the shape of your object and then when you get back your front end can rely on those kind of properties to render themselves so yeah that's about it guys that's how we can make a basic query to our graphql interface inside playground i think that's a very good progress in each playground i would request you to and write some basic queries and see what kind of data is coming up coming out of it play around and see what you can get in the next video we will look at a little more details about certain kinds of um you know intricacies around how do you pass parameters and stuff like that and then we are going to dive into code we will see how the information that we have already which is this you know basic graphql how we can translate into a query which we can fire from our react application and get the data so yes that's about it right now if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel